Hi everyone. Traditionally there were two main methods of teaching counterpoint. The first emphasized the horizontal linear aspect and was based on so-called species counterpoint where instruction begins with note against note two-part textures and is gradually built up to include multiple note combinations and three, four and more parts. And the second emphasized the vertical harmonic aspect and was based on thorough bass instruction, which often begins with a four-part homophonic vocal texture, which is then elaborated, and which may also be reduced to fewer parts. It is the second method which will be the focus of this video. Although beginning with more parts may seem counterintuitive, its logic is explained by the following quote from theorist, musician, and student of J.S. Bach, Johann Kernberger. It is best to begin with four-part counterpoint because it is hardly possible to write in two or three parts perfectly until four-part writing has been mastered. For since the complete harmony is in four parts, something must always be missing in two and three-part works, so that one cannot judge safely as to what is to be omitted from the harmony unless he has a thorough knowledge of four-part writing. Beginning with more parts, then, provides a clearer connection between the harmonic basis and the contrapuntal lines and provides a bridge between homophony and counterpoint. Completing exercises using this method also introduces students to the many melodic figures and motifs that may be used to connect harmony notes of an underlying chord progression. The type of texture these exercises produce is exemplified in forms such as the chorale prelude, chorale fantasia, and chorale variations or partitas. Looking at the following chorale in the first of eight variations by Johann Pachelbel, notice in the partita the four-part texture of the chorale has been reduced to three. To achieve this, Pachelbel essentially retains the bass and soprano parts of the chorale and then omits either the alto or tenor note to create three parts. Occasionally, however, he incorporates notes from two parts into a single line. For example, here and here, the notes of the tenor and bass are combined, and here, the notes of the alto and tenor. In this partita, each part shares in elaborating the harmonic framework. Throughout, Pachelbel essentially uses two motifs and their inversions, which always consist of 16th note groups. The first is the scale motif, which typically embellishes the interval of a third, and the second is the neighbor note motif, which typically prolongs a single note, but when modified may also move between two harmony notes. Other sixteenth note combinations can be heard as modifications of these motifs. For example, this arpeggio, although not strictly a scale or neighbor note motif, can be heard as a modification of an inverted scale. Pachelbel also occasionally uses other note values to embellish the parts. For example, here, the bass Ds are rhythmically modified as a dotted quarter note eighth note combination, and here a B eighth note is included. Harmonically, the first partita is essentially identical to the chorale, although Pachelbel occasionally changes a chord's inversion, omits an extension, omits a chord, or changes one chord for another. Here, Pachelbel omits the double D of the chorale's initial tonic chord and uses a scale motif to connect the tonic's third with the root note of the following submediant. Here, the first and third notes of the scale motif are harmony notes, although, as we'll see, various combinations of harmony and non-harmony notes may be used. Pachelbel here omits the fifth and doubled third of the chorale submediant and initially doubles its root note before moving through another scale motif to the third of the following tonic. In this instance, the initial note of the scale motif is a harmony note, while the others are passing notes. Here, the chorale's F-sharp quarter note is changed to two eighth notes, which moves the bass line up an octave, creating more drive towards the subdominance root note. 
Here, Paco Bell uses the neighbor note motif to prolong the tonic's root note, and here it prolongs the subdominant's third. In this bar, the two tonic chords are complete triads, while the submediant and subdominant each have either their tonic or third doubled and their fifth degrees omitted. In bar two, Pachelbel omits the chorale's cadential 6-4 and uses instead dominant harmony on both initial quarter note beats. These eighth notes, which in the chorale were an octave lower and which consisted of an accented passing note and harmony note, are here harmony and passing note. The D passing note moves in thirds with the B of the neighbor note motif, which itself can be heard as a passing note between the C sharp and A harmony notes. Here then, the middle and lower parts move in thirds. Here, Pachelbel uses a scale motif to combine the chorale soprano G and tenor E notes, the dominant seventh and fifth degrees. The scale motif includes the correct resolutions of these degrees to the tonic's root note and third, which are paired in the same register as in the chorale. Pachelbel embellishes the initial pair of these notes with a scale motif beginning from the tonic's fifth and moving through a pair of passing notes back to its root note on the fourth quarter note beat. Interestingly, in the chorale, the tonic's fifth is omitted on both quarter note beats, whereas here in the partita, Pachelbel includes it as part of the scale motif and this arpeggio. The arpeggio also connects the chorale's bass and tenor registers, preserving from the chorale the drive across the bar line created by the octave leap. As mentioned before, here Pachelbel combines the chorale's tenor and bass parts using the scale motif. Here the motif begins on the first sixteenth note beat and connects the D and F sharp harmony notes with passing E notes. As before, through all these beats, the tonic chords are complete triads, with Pachelbel here moving the third from the tenor to the middle part and including this passing C sharp in the scale motif. The C sharp then moves to these eighth notes, the seventh and root note of the C sharp leading note half diminished seventh chord, and onto the root note of the following tonic. This motion is retained from the chorale and provides a stepwise preparation for the leading note half diminished seventh chord seventh degree and also the correct resolution of its root note and seventh degrees to the following tonic chord. Here, Pachelbel uses the scale motif which momentarily doubles the leading note half diminished seventh chord seventh degree. The same scale motif is then used here in the lower part and combines the chorale's tenor and bass notes, while also providing a complete tonic triad. In both these instances, the scale motif's motion is between two harmony notes a third apart. Here, the motion occurs between the leading note half diminished seventh chords fifth and seventh degrees, and here between the tonics third and fifth. In the following bar, Pachelbel retains from the chorale the preparation of the seventh of this E minor supertonic seventh chord, and by combining the chorale's alto and tenor parts in the scale motif, also retains its fifth and its resolution to the root note of the following dominant seventh chord. Within the scale motif, the motion from the fifth of the supertonic harmony ascends back to its seventh and also descends to resolve to the dominance root note. In other words, this B note possesses two functions within the scale passage. In the lower part of the partita, Pachelbel omits the leap to the supertonic's root note, possibly to preserve the drive from the tonic's third onto the root note of the cadential dominant. Here, the dominant seventh, seventh degree is moved up an octave from its position in the chorale and is included as part of the same scale motif used over the leading note half diminished seventh and tonic chord in the preceding bar. The seventh is then transferred to resolve here as part of another scale motif over tonic harmony. Once again, here the tonic is a complete triad, and as mentioned previously, 
the rhythm of the D note octave leap in the bass has been modified 